Hi, I'm Shelby and I am an associate scientist in the formulation development team here at Phosphorex. Today, we will be using our Replogen Crossflow KR2I tangential flow filtration system for processing small scale feasibility batches of lipid nanoparticles or LNPs. We will also discuss strategies to optimize the TFF process for improved efficiency and process scalability. Tangential flow filtration, or TFF, is a scalable unit operation used to purify and concentrate nanoparticle suspensions as well as expedite buffer exchange via diafiltration. In hollow fiber TFF modules, which is what is set up here, feed suspension is driven by a pump through the interior of hollow fibers that run parallel to the length of the column in which they are housed. The nanoparticles that are larger than the pore sizes of the hollow fibers are retained in the retentate fraction that is continuously circulated through the system. Molecules that are smaller than the pore size, such as ethanol and buffer salts, pass through the walls of the hollow fibers and exit the system in the permeate fraction. With respect to LNPs, TFF is used in downstream processing as a method of facilitating buffer exchange to replace the aqueous formulation buffers in the organic solvent with the desired buffer for continued processing and storage. TFF is also used to further concentrate the LNP suspension to the target product concentration. Advantages of using TFF as opposed to other downstream methods for processing LNPs include speed, efficiency, the ability to perform both concentration and diafiltration steps, and scalability. TFF is a more practical approach for large-scale manufacturing of LNPs than dialysis and centrifugation. Parameters to consider when operating TFF include the feed flow rate, product concentration, transmembrane pressure, which is abbreviated as TMP, and the permeate flux. TMP acts as the driver of flow across the membrane fibers and is equal to the average applied pressure along the length of the column from the feed to the retentate ends, minus the permeate pressure. Permeate flux is measured as the rate of permeate flow per unit of column surface area. These parameters influence the speed and efficiency of the TFF process. For example, increasing the feed flow rate, or the TMP, will subsequently increase the permeate flux, which will decrease the processing time required. On the other hand, increasing the product concentration can have the opposite effect and reduce permeate flux due to a phenomenon known as gel layer formation. Particularly when operating at low flow rates, high product concentrations, or long processing times, a thin layer of particles can develop on the surface of the hollow fibers, resulting in decreased permeate flux by hindering the passage of media through the walls of the hollow fibers into the permeate fraction. As molecules are continuously deposited, a thicker gel layer clogs the pores, leading to what is called membrane fouling, which significantly reduces the effectiveness of the TFF procedure. Therefore, TFF operating parameters must be optimized to avoid these issues. At Phosphorix, we have investigated the relationship between TMP, feed flow rate, product concentration, column loading, and permeate flux as they relate to downstream processing of LNPs via TFF. Using a standard series of experiments, we are able to optimize each key TFF parameter in order to optimize the TFF process from start to finish. First, with the natural operating TMP of the column and the standard flow rate selected, experiments are performed to identify the optimal concentration for diafiltration that maximizes permeate flux to reduce buffer volumes and processing times. Product concentration is increased incrementally by concentrating from a higher volume to a lower volume to observe the effect on permeate flux during diafiltration. With the optimal concentration now selected, TMP excursion experiments are conducted to identify the optimal values for feed flow rate and TMP that maximize the permeate flux. While operating diafiltration, TMP is increased using an automated back pressure valve that restricts the flow of the retentate, and the impact on the permeate flux is observed. With the optimal concentration, TMP, and flow rate now identified, column loading is assessed to determine the optimal column surface area for the batch scale, which can minimize the cost of larger hollow fiber TFF columns that have a greater surface area, such as these, 
if a higher column loading can be achieved on a smaller, more cost-efficient column, such as this one. This is also important because it may not be feasible to linearly scale column surface area with the batch size. Finally, to confirm that the parameters optimized in the previous experiments do in fact yield stable LMPs while reducing the processing time required, a batch of LMPs is fabricated and then processed via TFF under the optimized conditions. The goal of these experiments is to decrease processing time and buffer consumption, reduce the shear stress on particles, and develop a direct TFF process for scale-up purposes. Ultimately, optimizing the TFF process at a small scale improves the efficiency and scalability to support large-scale batch manufacturing. During these experiments, the stability of the LMPs must be monitored throughout the process, such as by measuring size and polydispersity index. LMP formulations do not all behave the same, particularly when varying lipid components and compositions, as well as cargo types. Therefore, it is important to consider the stability of the particles during the TFF process. The TFF parameters that you select to process each formulation may vary depending on the stability of the formulation and the desired product profile characteristics of the final LMPs. It is important to consider how to optimize the TFF procedure used for processing your formulation to save time and resources while not compromising the integrity of your product. And at Phosphorix, we can help. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.